The problem is his methods. Last month in the Times newspaper, uh, George Bush uh, it revealed that uh, he has given Israel the amber light to attack Iran. Pentagon officials were quoted as saying, quote, the president is really preoccupied with the nuclear threat against Israel, and I know he doesn't believe that anything but force will deter Iran, unquote. Now, both contenders who want to succeed Bush, McCain and Obama, are outdoing one another to show their loyalty to Zionists. This is largely due to the influence of the Christian Zionist lobby. While critics claim 25 to 30 million subscribers, uh, John Hagee, Pat Robertson have weekly access to at least 100 million Christians. The Pew Research Center showed recently that 60% of U.S. evangelicals uh, support the state of Israel, and half of them uh, argued and believed that the primary reason for that support was their theological convictions. Unity Coalition for Israel, founded in 1991, is the largest of these organizations. It is an umbrella movement for 200 different organizations, 40 million active members, 1,700 radio stations, 245 Christian TV stations, 120 Christian newspapers. The, the three largest Christian Zionist organizations, the International Christian Embassy, Jerusalem, Christian Friends of Israel, and Bridges for Peace. A powerful movement? You bet. Christian Zionism is undoubtedly a dominant force shaping U.S. policy in the Middle East. Now, in my second presentation tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. in the Shine Tent, I'm going to show you how the Bible repudiates Christian Zionism, and you won't want to miss it. We're going to look at what the Bible says about the future and about Armageddon, and we're going to ask the question, do you want to be left behind? Now, I don't want you to lose any sleep tonight uh, because I don't believe Jesus is coming back before tomorrow. Why? Because it's already tomorrow in Australia. <laughs> so tomorrow we're going to look at the good news. Today I've got to tell you the bad news, and it's worse than you can ever imagine. I want to highlight six ways in which Christian Zionists are applying their faith politically. One, defending Israel. Two, assisting Jewish emigration. Three, supporting the illegal settlements. Four, lobbying for an exclusive Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And five, funding the rebuilding of the Jewish temple. Six, opposing the peace process. I'm going to show you these six strategies are uh, exacerbating tensions in the Middle East and they are hastening Armageddon. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. One. Supporting Israeli colonialism. The conviction that the Jewish people remain God's chosen people, something, by the way, that's not stated at all in the New Testament. The church is described as God's chosen people. In some ways, separate from the church, is deeply rooted in Christian Zionism. Till the 1980s, if you're old enough to remember, U.S. foreign policy was largely focused on countering the Soviet hegemony. The protection of Western Europe with NATO was a higher priority than Israel. But with the collapse of communism and uh, a power vacuum created in the Middle East, U.S. Uh, influences have filled that vacuum. Following the Gulf War to liberate Kuwait, Afghanistan from the Taliban, Iraq from Saddam Hussein, the U.S. has significantly increased its influence in the Middle East, and the rise of the pro-Israeli lobby has gone alongside that. As a consequence... Israel in particular has become central to U.S. foreign policy, not least since 9-11. And that uh, change in foreign policy has been strongly influenced by the Christian right. It's why you won't find a single serving U.S. politician critical of Israel. It's political suicide to criticize Israel on anything. Let me give you one in insight into this. Zeev Chaffetz, writing in the New York Times last year, said, In the last eight years alone, an estimated 400,000 born-again Christians have sent Rabbi Ikel Eckstein about a quarter of a billion dollars for Jewish causes of his personal choosing. He went on to say, No Jew since Jesus has commanded this kind of Gentile following. One, supporting Israel, defending Israel. 
two, restoration. How is that facilitated? Well, it is facilitated by assisting the return of the Jewish people to Palestine. With the fall of communism in the former Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, since 1980, a coalition of Christian organizations have been actively working in Russia and Eastern Europe assisting and encouraging Jews to make Aliyah, to, to leave and move to Palestine. Uh, Exabus was the first organization, 1991. It was first called the Good News Bus Travels Company, hard to sell in Hull, where it came from. So they changed their name to Exabus. It sounds much more, uh, much more sexy, if you like, Exabus. It's facilitated 56,000 Jewish people to emigrate to Israel in close cooperation with the Jewish agency. Since 1991, the International Christian Embassy has paid for 40,000 uh, Russian emigres to move to Israel. The problem is they are being located in the occupied territories. They are displacing Palestinians. They will identify Jewish communities in Russia. They will show them films of idyllic life in Israel. They will uh, pay off their debts, uh, pay for their exit permits, uh, for documentation to prove their Jewish origins. They'll provide passports, debt repayment, transport, accommodation. They will assist them to resettle in Israel and the West Bank. Uh, they will provide food, clothing, kitchen, school supplies, as well as medical equipment. The facilitation of uh, Jews leaving Russia and Eastern Europe and moving to Israel is being facilitated by Christian, misguided Christian organizations. First, defending Israel. Second, assisting uh, emigration. Third, sustaining the West Bank settlements. For many Zionists, based on the promise God made to Abraham that the borders of his land would be from the river of Egypt to the Euphrates, Christian Zionist organizations believe that uh, Israel must expand its borders, not retract them. And therefore, they defend the settlement program and they justify the apartheid separation wall. The conviction that the entire West Bank is integral to Israel has led many Christian Zionists to adopt settlements. Now, you may think this is a crazy idea, but if you're the pastor of a church with 18,000 members, the idea of adopting a settlement of 500 members sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? You can sponsor a settlement quite easily with a church that size. 39 of the settlements have been adopted by over 50 churches in South Africa, uh, in Holland, Germany, Philippines, and the USA. They show solidarity by funding the settlements, visiting them, praying for them, uh, defending them, justifying them. So, for example, under Carter, the settlements were illegal. Under Reagan, they became an obstacle to peace. Under George W. Bush, they are now Israeli neighborhoods to be retained in any final status agreement. Fourth, Jerusalem, lobbying for international recognition. At the core of the Christian Zionist support for Israel's claim to the occupied territories lies the conviction that Jerusalem must remain exclusively and undivided the Israeli capital. If you know your geography, you will know that there are no embassies in Jerusalem. The international community does not recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, notwithstanding Marks and Spencer's atlas, which shows Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. So the Christian Zionist lobby is seeking to change world opinion and uh, facilitate uh, Jerusalem becoming the capital of Israel. How are they going to do that? Very easy. You need $100 million and one bill through the, Isra uh, through the U.S. Congress to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. That's all it will take. Uh, in 1995, Senator Bob Dole, who led the crusade to achieve this, said Israel's capital is not on the table of the peace process. Moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem does nothing to prejudice the outcome of any future negotiation. That's pretty Orwellian in its logic. It's entirely opposite. It prejudices everything because it destroys an independent, viable, contiguous Palestinian state. If you take Jerusalem out of the ingredients, there is no Palestine. Senator Bob Dole went on to say, Jerusalem is today, as it has always been for 3,000 years, the heart and soul of the Jewish people. It is also and should remain forever the eternal undivided capital of the state of Israel. The time has come to enact legislation to get the job done. Three occasions, Congress has passed legislation to do that. Three times, successive U.S. presidents have refused to sign off on the legislation. But it's a question of when it will happen, not whether. 
give you an insight. The International Christian Embassy is sponsoring adverts in the New York Times called Christians to Support a United Jerusalem. United meaning exclusively uh, Israeli, not united in the way we would understand. We, the undersigned Christian spiritual leaders communicating weekly to more than 100 million Christian Americans, are proud to join together in supporting the continued sovereignty of the State of Israel over the holy city of Jerusalem. We believe Jerusalem, any portion of it, should not be negotiable in the peace process. Jerusalem must remain undivided as the eternal capital of the Jewish people. You hear this mantra all the time, but notice how they end their advert. Join us in our holy mission to ensure Jerusalem will remain the capital of Israel. Moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem is a holy mission because they believe it's fulfilling God's agenda. However, even more critical to the Zionist reading of prophecy, many Christian Zionists believe the Jewish temple must be rebuilt on the Haram al-Sharif in place of the Dome of the Rock. And you will find uh, many Christian Zionists supporting and facilitating this to take place. And their hero within the Jewish community is a guy called Gershon Salomon. He's the founder of the Temple Mount Faithful. Uh, you might like to get onto his email list and find out what they're up to. The Temple Mount Faithful uh, is committed to destroying the Dome of the Rock and rebuilding the Jewish Temple. And the Israeli High Court has given them permission to lay the foundation stones. Twice a year, they try and take an articulated lorry uh, into the, uh, in, through the Dungate into, uh, into the uh, plaza uh, below the, uh, the Temple Mount area to lay the cornerstones. This is what he said at the International Christian Embassy gathering recently. The mission of the present generation is to liberate the Temple Mount and remove, I repeat, to remove the defiling abomination there. The Jewish people will not be stopped at the gates leading to the Temple Mount. We will fly our Israeli flag over the Temple Mount, which will be minus its Dome of the Rock. It will only have our Israeli flag and our temple. This is what our generation must accomplish. And in the Times newspaper, he was interviewed... Uh, and he insisted the Islamic shrine would be destroyed. He said this, quote, in the Times newspaper, a hardly a, a left-wing radical newspaper, the Israeli government must do it. We must have a war. There will be many nations against it, but God will be our general. I am sure this is a test. God is expecting us to move the dome with no fear of other nations. The Messiah will not come by himself. We should bring him by fighting. Now, that sounds remarkably like the zealots of the first century. Gershon Salomon is a regular speaker at Christian conferences and churches, especially in the States. And since 1967, there have been over 100 armed attempts to destroy the Dome of the Rock. And not on a single occasion has a Israeli prime minister or chief rabbi uh, condemned or criticized any of those assaults. Which leads us to our sixth plank, the future. Opposing the peace process, hastening Armageddon. The hostility that many Christian Zionists show toward any compromise over sharing the land or Jerusalem or the holy sites makes for an ominous future, not least because of the inherent pessimism of their eschatology. And we're going to look at that tomorrow in more detail. The first part of the plank of their view of the future is this idea of an alliance. It's a polarized worldview. Uh, Jerry Falwell best expressed this. He said, God has been kind to America because America has been kind to the Jewish people. Mike Evans, uh, a, a, a contemporary advocate, founder and director of the Jerusalem Prayer Team, which brings together two or 300 Christian leaders uh, supporting uh, the Zionist adventure. He said this in, in 1980. Uh, as long ago as 1980, he wrote a book called Israel, if you can get your head around this, Israel, America's key to survival. He claimed this. Only one nation, Israel, stands between terrorist aggression and the complete decline of the United States as democratic world power. God is going to bless America and Israel as well. If Israel falls, the United States can no longer remain a democracy. Arab money is being used to control and influence major U.S. corporations making it economically more and more difficult for the U.S. to stand against world terrorism. That's what he said in 1980. But he made an even bigger splash in, uh, in 2000 and, um, 2004. He read a new book called The American Prophecies, and it reached the New York Times bestseller list three weeks before it was published. How do you get a book on the New York Times bestseller list three weeks before your book's been published? Easy. 
you tell all your fans to pre-order three copies, pay for them, and then when they arrive, return them to the author and he will give them away. Pretty slick, isn't it? And this is, this is, uh, what, uh, this is what the book says. Is America in prophecy? Yes, it is, he said. After thousands of hours of research, I'm totally convinced America is found in prophecy, and I believe you will too after reading my book. His book is one of the very, very few five-star rated Christian books on Amazon. Amazon's editorial review observes that actual quotes from Scripture are rather sparse. You know, they've got the dilemma. How do you sell a book, but how do you not sell a book too strongly? But controversially, this is what he says in the book. September the 11th would never have happened if America had fought the same bigotry in the 1990s rather than trying to appease it. Millions of Jews would be living today if anti-Semitism had not been ignored in the 1920s and 30s. And I agree with him. But then he goes on to say the Great Depression, as well as other American tragedies, happened because of America's pride and challenge to God's almighty plan for Israel. Christian Zionists like John Hagee and Mike Evans see America as the great redeemer, her superpower role in the world predicted in scripture, providentially ordained, and leading us into a, a, a global catastrophe. One author said, it is a dualistic, Manichaean view of global politics, America and Israel together against an evil world. 